Everyone thinks they know what the Gripen is. Cheap, light, and clever. A small soldier for small nations. But what if I told you that a single change made inside may radically change the story and rewrite the influence maps of the continents? Wait, there's more than just metal in this jet's engine. Power, politics, and a pricey chess piece are all involved. Think of a fighter that is nimble, easy to operate, and ideal for countries who do not want to invest in the most expensive gear. That is the Gripen's photo. For years, Saab sold the Gripen with that assurance. The Gripen E and F versions delivered on that promise with a longer range, more electronics, and a bigger payload. The heart at the core of that upgrade is hardly noticed by most people. It is the catalyst that converts political choices into useful skills. Today, that heart is the General Electric F414 series. That engine gives the Gripen the thrust and reliability it needs to compete with larger aircraft while keeping prices down. The Gripen chose the F414 for both technical and political reasons since who supplies your engine is as crucial as who supplies your radar. Start plus one. Now think about a different situation. Imagine that Swedish or Gripen export clients replacing the American engine with a new power plant from a British company, a European partnership, or even a local national champion. Suddenly, the aircraft is more than just a Swedish design with American parts. It becomes a platform linked to a new industrial network new supply chain, and new political ties. Performance is therefore not the only factor to be considered when talking about new fighter engines. It has to do with influence, technological transfers, and employment distribution within an area. Let's analyze this. The Gripen E and F were designed to be modern and cheap. They are equipped with enough weapons, a modern cockpit, and advanced sensors to be effective in today's conflicts. However, future advancements, endurance, and cargo are all constrained by engines. Because of the F414, the Gripen E represents a major upgrade over earlier models. It generates roughly 22,000 pounds of thrust and has a throttle response suitable for fast jet operations. Because of that thrust level, the Gripen can add additional fuel, weapons, or larger sensors without sacrificing maneuverability. Because of this, the aircraft can do more flights for less money per flying hour than many of its twin-engine competitors. Performing is one thing, dependency is another. If you buy your engine from a single overseas supplier, you have to rely on them for upkeep, replacement parts, and political clearance for export or upgrade. A supplier's government may become vulnerable if it decides to impose restrictions on exports or technology transfers. That is something that every procurement officer must consider. Because of this, a number of countries support domestic production or alternative sources. It is also the cause of the extreme politicization of high-level engine debates. Now, introduced are Rolls-Royce in the changing engine industry. In recent years, the leading engine makers have pursued both civilian contracts and military opportunities. Rolls-Royce has been quietly rebuilding its name in the aircraft industry, in addition to its long-standing civil business. The company might be able to compete in the upcoming generation of fighter engines with its objectives and partnerships. When a major non-American engine manufacturer enters the fighter market, it may present chances for nations who want to avoid political ties with the United States, or who want to develop stronger links with Europe and Asia. According to news sources, nations and corporations are actively lobbying and negotiating to switch engine supply lines. Who buys what could be altered by this pressure? Think of customers in South Korea, India, Brazil, and several Asian, African, and Latin American nations. Their choices are influenced by a number of factors, including cost, promises of technology transfer, and the desire to build a domestic defense industry. If a dependable non-American engine for a platform like the Gripen becomes available, the offer is changed. Because a Gripen with a European engine would have different export laws and alliances, certain countries might find it easier to accept it. Additionally, if the new engine incorporates local assembly or deeper technological transfer, it becomes a political prize. It includes industries, engineers with local training, and a narrative that prioritizes home capability above dependence on external resources. There is an additional layer. 
New engine programs are rarely national efforts these days. What they are are consortiums. They bring together companies from several countries to establish cross-border supply networks and share risk. As evidenced by the fighter industry, teams from several countries occasionally collaborate to build engines for next-generation aircraft. When that happens, selecting a certain engine involves more considerations than just technical ones. It then evolves into an allusion to a whole industrial ecosystem. That ecology might distort alliances. It could lead to long-term reliance. It could lead to civilian spillovers in manufacturing, materials research, and high technology. These are serious issues. They lay the groundwork for power in the future. What are the chances that the Gripen will finally have a viable alternative to the F-414? In summary, it is both feasible and challenging. A car's engine can be changed differently from an airplane's. Redesigns are required for the airframe, intake geometry, fuel systems, and maintenance schedules. It is really expensive, it's risky. It's not impossible, though. Industry and governments are highly motivated. If a domestic or foreign engine manufacturer offers a package that includes not only the engine, but also local jobs and knowledge transfer, it may have an impact on decisions made in particular export contests. For nations with a rising defense budget and industrial ambitions, that package might be too enticing to pass up. Examine the market from a practical standpoint. Saab has successfully positioned the Gripen as a versatile, export-friendly fighter. The Gripen's production method includes industry collaboration, partnerships, and local offsets. That sales technique makes it easier to imagine a future Gripen type that can accommodate different engines depending on the buyer. Saab has always prioritized modularity and flexibility in response to partner needs. Suppose an engine supplier can match performance with a higher industrial return or more political comfort. The Gripen then becomes a vehicle for that new industrial partnership, rather than a Swedish product. The consequences are far-reaching. They affect employment growth, long-term maintenance costs, and the political influence of the supplier countries. However, let me explain the technical trade-offs. The F-414 is now an adult. It has been proven by other combatants. It satisfies the weight and performance specifications of the Gripen. Any new engine must match or exceed that performance while fitting within the limitations of the aircraft's design. It's a big request. If an engine is replaced with one that is heavier, consumes more fuel, or needs a different intake airflow, the aircraft's flying characteristics will change. It is necessary to balance the benefits of a new political alignment with the expenses of redesign and technological penalties. Financial concerns are also quite important. Engine development is one of the most expensive parts of aeroplane programs. Manufacturers such as Pratt and Whitney, GE, or Rolls-Royce are concerned about whether sales and long-term maintenance agreements will result in a return on their investment. The challenge facing nations is whether investing more money now for better political terms or local assembly will result in cost savings or strategic problems later. We have seen this trend before. Countries have willingly paid more to obtain control over maintenance and replacement components since the alternative was strategic vulnerability. Next is the reality of export restrictions. Engines supplied by the United States are subject to U.S. export control restrictions. These rules may limit who is qualified for what and under what situations. That factor alone has altered procurement choices in several cases. If a vendor offers an alternative engine without the same restrictions, the aircraft's potential market might grow. For countries who want more autonomy in the use or development of their weapons or that have tense relations with the U.S., this flexibility is crucial. It isn't a theory. Everyday procurement decisions are influenced by it. We must also pay attention to the strategic messaging. When a country chooses a particular engine supplier, it is sending a statement. It communicates agreement, or at the absolute least, a willingness to cooperate with that provider's home country and industrial base. In the modern period, when alliances are vulnerable to change and regional power balances are crucial, these messages might be just as relevant as the equipment itself. An aircraft powered by a non-American engine might be interpreted as a symbol of both independence and a shift in industrial direction. 
Customers looking for that story might favor such solutions. There are also implications for maintenance and training. A different engine modifies the maintenance procedures. It alters the supply chain for spare parts. It changes the training of technicians. If a country wants to build a domestic maintenance base, it will most likely need to transfer some knowledge and produce some goods locally. Engine manufacturers will negotiate appropriately because they are aware of this. Those transactions influence the industrial map for decades. There is more to them than work. They represent the potential for future exports, upgrades, and repairs of domestic systems. So what does this mean for global power? Engine supply chains can be reoriented to shift the centers of industrial gravity. Increased military contracts given to Asian or European engine producers will lead to dependencies and partnerships that shift alliances. These connections have an impact on decisions regarding the acquisition of ships, radars, missiles, and logistics. They have an impact on who can cooperate in times of crisis and who can support one another in times of tranquility. In essence, engines are lever points. They are capable of transferring industrial force and political dominance across national borders. There are already indications of competition from sources other than traditional partners. Governments and companies are actively promoting technology transfer agreements, joint ventures, and local cooperation. The trend is not new, but it is becoming more widespread. The stakes are high since defense manufacturing affects civilian industry and research. The resources and expertise used in engines are useful for advanced manufacturing, materials research, and power systems. The engine technology leader will impact more than just military equipment. They will have an impact on long-term economic and technical leadership plans. Now let's make this more likable. If you live in a country where the Gripen is being debated, this matters to you as a taxpayer and voter. The location of manufacturers, the quantity of engineers trained, and the level of national defense control may all be impacted by the choice of engine. Whether your Air Force can upgrade its aircraft without creating political issues will be determined by this. It will also affect the kinds of diplomatic ties your country strengthens. The Grapen program itself benefits from the possibility to work with multiple engine partners. Customers who are as interested in politics and business as they are in flight performance have options, and the platform remains competitive. Saab's approach of partnering and employing local manufacturing has already resulted in sales successes for the Gripen in several locations. If a competitive alternative to the F-414 that offers comparable performance and better industrial conditions becomes available, the Gripen's attractiveness could soar. Regional air balances may be disrupted if customers who had previously avoided the Gripen, due to engine politics, abruptly alter their minds. Included is a caution. Engine swaps present substantial cost and technological difficulties. Previous attempts to alter the power plants of fighters have shown how difficult and expensive the process can be. Any decision must strike a balance between immediate costs and long-term strategic benefits. Calculus plays a major role in both defense strategy and national budget. This also explains why these decisions often need years and complex negotiations between governments and corporations. Additionally, engines are being improved for efficiency and environmental concerns. The primary objectives of new designs are reduced fuel consumption and materials that allow for higher temperatures and better performance. These advancements increase range and reduce operating expenses. Additionally, they enable more covert operations due to their enhanced endurance and less logistical footprint. For countries with long-term objectives, the possibility of greener, more efficient engines can be a strong selling point. Over the next 10 years, there will likely be more competition for engine supply. It is expected that nations will use procurement to achieve industry cooperation and bolster domestic capabilities. Expect engine manufacturers to compete based on both their technological prowess and their industrial products. Expect the Grapen program to be in the middle of that competition because its primary selling factors are affordability and flexibility. Thus, the statement, new engine could shift global power, should not be dismissed as marketing. A new power plant can change who has access to spare parts, where manufacturers are situated, which countries train personnel, and who makes choices during emergencies or conflicts. 
It has the same ability to tip the political scales as a new treaty or base. The Gripen is a real-world example of how an aeroplane is more than simply hardware and software. It is a node in a larger network of business, politics, and strategy. To sum up, here is a clear takeaway. The biggest strength of the Gripen has always been its adaptability. In addition to its wings and radar, its future strength will be determined by the choices made on the engine under its hood. If other engine suppliers can match the F414's performance while offering better industrial terms and fewer political problems, the Grapen may be able to find new customers and jobs. This is how aircraft affect geopolitics. One machine thus becomes a part of a larger story about power and those who possess it. If you would want more direct conversations on engines, aeroplanes, and the global impact of defense policies, please click like and subscribe. It allows me to provide more in-depth analyses like this one and keeps you updated on the impending big shift in air power.